New at 7. Fines or imprisonment. Four women who attacked another woman at a pool party sentenced. Sex charges dropped against service station operator as the defendant admits she lied. Major update provided on work being done to prepare the Harbourton Hospital amidst the threat from COVID-19. And a death of an icon, the country mourns the passing of steel pan historian Eustace Manning Henry. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's News Authority. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Shermaine Jeremy, and a pleasant good evening to all our viewers. Joining us both at home and online, thank you for being with us tonight. And the four women who wounded the Natalie Nicholson must each pay the complainant $600 by May 29th or will spend six months in prison. Shamia Walsh, Dalian Richardson, Shanique Dwyer, and Lakeisha Gray attacked Nicholson at a pool party in September of 2018. Now, the incident was sparked by an apparent love triangle involving Nicholson, Gray, and a male whom each claimed as their boyfriend. A large rum bottle, which was broken on Nicholson's body during a fight, was then used to inflict several wounds to her head, arms, and a chest area. Nicholson says she suffers headaches from the injuries to her head and had to return to hospital for complications resulting from the injuries to her chest. Before the judge handed down her sentence, each defendant was told to make a verbal apology to the complainant in open court. Now, the defendants have all been placed on probation for two years and face two years in prison if there is a violation. Meanwhile, the family of the victim, Denatalie Nicholson, is feeling disappointed after the verdict was handed down today. They lament the victim is the victim did not get the justice she deserves. Nicholson was still distraught over the fines imposed on her attackers when ABS News spoke with her today. The family believes the fines were too lenient in the matter. The 21-year-old suffers from occasional headaches and constant pains in the area of her upper body where she received a deep wound from the attack. We will have more reactions from the victim to Natalie Nicholson in subsequent newscasts. Well, a service station operator was freed of sex charges today after the complainant admitted she lied. The girl, who is now 15 years old, had alleged the man had sex with her in 2018 when she was 13. However, during her testimony in court, the girl said she lied to police about the incident. According to the witness, one of her friends, who was also 13 years old at the time, had sexual intercourse with her boyfriend. She said her friend suggested they go to the defendant's home and say the defendant had sex with them to shield the friend's boyfriend from getting into trouble. The other girl involved left the country shortly after the incident, and prosecutors have not been able to get in touch with her. Now, the defendant had been charged with two counts of unlawful sexual intercourse with a girl under the age of 14 and was facing life imprisonment. The man was found not guilty by the jury under the direct of the judge. The use of storage and toxic chemicals was front and center at a media briefing today. ABS's Rakib Aparisi outlines the major issues raised by health officials. We, we do not want the situation where you create an unintentional bomb. Or we do not want you to create um, an explosive device. General Manager of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, Darrell Spencer, says the government has a number of concerns with the use of chemicals, including mixing chemicals, particularly when cleaning. These chemicals, when they're commingled, they, they react sometimes with each other, uh, creating a third um, chemical, which can be dangerous. And the chemicals are dangerous to humans. Director of Analytical Services, Dr. Lynn Roy Christopher, says another challenge is the repackaging of chemicals and other poisonous substances. So I've seen tick medication, for instance, that is just being sold in, in a clear water plastic bottle. And so, or you might take rat bait from the original container, put it in a plastic bag, you seal that however you think you've sealed it, and then you stick that in the bucket that the rat bait came in in the first place. We have to look at the whole aspect of repackaging, which is why we discourage it. There are guidelines, but the likelihood that these guidelines will be met 
to the level at which it came from the manufacturer is it's very much unlikely. Persons found guilty of not adhering to the guidelines may face imprisonment of up to six months. Registrar of Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Jonah Ormond says another major challenge is that no chemical and pesticide distributor is registered with his department. He says that is currently being rectified. Rakib Aparisi reporting for ABS News. All right, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Rakib with that story. And never mind what you saw there, it is actually Dr. Leonor Christian. Apologies for that. Well, Antigua and Barbuda has a new Austrian ambassador, Stefan Weidinger. ABS's Jessica Russell was there for his courtesy calls to the country's officials today. We are asking you to assist us in the councils of the European Union to uh, address at least the issues of de risking and um, certainly blacklisting that are affecting us. Prime Minister Gaston Braun hopes Austria will be an ally to tackle international finance-related sanctions. The Prime Minister made the request during a courtesy call by newly appointed Austrian Ambassador Stefan Weidinger. The Austrian diplomat says he'll take the issue further. The, the basic uh, uh, function or, or result consequence of sanctions is always to spread insecurity and this uh, affects, of course, uh, the economy. I take this very seriously and with we we'll put forward uh, this point to, to my minister, of course. Prime Minister Brown also so says an offer for Austria to have an office in Antigua uh, remains open. At some point we had a discussion about Austria perhaps taking up an offer that we extended to you to establish an embassy here. Uh, we had agreed to donate a pass of land, uh, maybe one or two acres of land to assist you to do so, so that you can further strengthen not only bilateral but your regional relationship with Caraco. The ambassador says he'll push the matter forward. I, I cannot promise you anything, you know, Understood. because uh, uh, setting up, uh, we have recently in, in the uh, past couple of uh, years closed several embassies and some of them were reopened then because we saw how important it is to have a direct email and, and tweets and it doesn't, uh, can never substitute direct contact. Sir. The new ambassador also paid Foreign Affairs Minister E.P. Chet Green and Governor General His Excellency Sir Ronnie Williams visits. Antigua and Barbuda established diplomatic ties with Austria in 1985. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Uh, thanks to Jessica Russell there. Of course, we remind you that it is the uh, ambassador for Austria in this country as well. All right, stay with us for more of the stories that we're tracking for you this evening, including this one. An update on the work taking place at the Halberton Hospital as the country prepares for any eventuality from the spread of COVID-19. And hundreds of students, well, we'll tell you about that one in addition. We'll also tell you about drones because there are new regulations which are supposed to be coming on stream. We'll tell you the timeline for that on air and on air, online and on air. Stay with us. You're going to do the ABS Evening News. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded, getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home, and making sure your business can keep going even after an accident happens on site. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Why not stay in, turn off the alarm clock, and sleep some more on your perfect mattress from Quartz? For the widest range of mattresses from the world's best brands, the best value guaranteed. Shop today and let our sleep experts help you to decide on the best option to suit your needs. At Quartz, we don't just sell mattresses. We're offering you the best night's sleep. So, sleep in a little on your new mattress from Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home.
Thank you so much for staying with us. You're in tune with the ABS Evening News. Well, most people recover from the new coronavirus or COVID-19 within two weeks. That's according to experts from the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. PAHO's executive director, Dr. Carissa Etienne, presented findings from a mission that went to China to study the illness. Some 80% of the infections were mild. 14% of the infections were considered to be severe and 5% very severe, requiring ICU and ventilation. Well, she says less than 3% of those infected were under the age of 19, and people in this age group tended to have mild symptoms. The duration of illness for mild illnesses generally about two weeks, for severe illnesses some three to six weeks. Um, a week requiring some of them intensive care and ventilation for a period of time up to 40 days. Now, Dr. Etienne says the fatality rate of the coronavirus depends on the intensity and the capacity to manage the virus. Researchers found a death rate of 5.8% in Wuhan, China, where the virus was first detected in December last year. However, the rest of China experienced a fatality rate of less than 1% from COVID-19. The executive director says the, the virus is worst for people with underlying illnesses, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, and chronic respiratory illnesses. Dr. Etienne says several Caribbean countries already have the capacity to test for the coronavirus and PAHO is working to strengthen capacity in the region to detect, contain and manage cases. Meanwhile, top officials in government met with a wide cross-section of members of the yachting community this afternoon. The meeting was held in the Nelson's dockyard and allowed for an exchange of ideas and information on the threat posed by COVID-19. The meeting was chaired by Health Minister the Honorable Marwin Joseph and facilitated by the National Parks Authority. Also involved in discussions were Tourism Minister the Honorable Charles Fernandez and Minister of Foreign Affairs and MP of the area E.P. Chet Green. There was frank discussion on the challenges from key stakeholders. Inspector of Customs at the Antigua and Barbuda Customs and Excise Division was among the resource persons who shared insights into certain procedures. Minister Joseph says a pr presentation will be made to Cabinet at its meeting tomorrow. He also reveals a broad-based committee will be established that will be tasked with devising preventive measures to deal with the global outbreak of the coronavirus. The committee is expected to convene for its first meeting on Thursday. Thursday. Meanwhile, one parliamentary representative will be heightening awareness among his constituents about the novel coronavirus COVID-19. Member of Parliament for St. Paul, the Honorable E.P. Chet Green, will host a public lecture on Thursday, the 5th of March. Sherilyn Beezer spoke exclusively with the MP and has the latest. We, we have several hundred yachts per year coming to Antigua to, to next, next dockyard. Um, thousands of visitors coming to see our landmark um, fortifications and uh, other tourist interests. The St. Paul's MP says the community also has many hotels, restaurants, car rental companies, supermarkets, and several businesses that cater to the hospitality industry. And so the intention is to have all people in St. Paul identify with the information, credit information, so we can relate to the coronavirus. I, I don't want people to be reacting, uh, you know, in, in haste, emotionally, or any, any such, but rather to have information, credit information, scientific information. Thursday's lecture will be held at the Cobbs Cross Primary School beginning at 7.15 p.m. with medical practitioners from within the community. Dr. Jerry Simon, Alfonso Jerry Simon, and he will be um, joined and dislocated by Dr. James Knight um, to deliver the, the message and to, to feel questions. He hopes to have representation from the Ministry of Health to bring certain national perspectives to the fore. MP Green invites other tourism stakeholders, including taxi operators and community groups from across the country. He says the COVID-19 is deadly and it's paramount that Antiguans and Barbudans are fully aware of its potential social and economic implications. The lecture is made possible under the auspices of the MP, Honorable E.P. Chet Green, in conjunction with the St. Paul's business community. Sherilyn Beza reporting for ABS News. 
Thanks, Shirley. Let's keep across that story relating to COVID-19, the novel coronavirus, because work continues apace on readying laboratory facilities as the country prepares for testing uh, for the novel coronavirus. While well, this will be located in the former radiology unit at the old Halberton Hospital, Health Minister Honorable Malwin Joseph says that that building is perfect for the lab because it's speci especially built with very thick walls to prevent radiation from escaping. Fortuitously for us, it's also ideal to have a laboratory because there are concerns about uh, escape of viruses and so on. And so we have designed it so we have sealed doors and the necessary ventilation devices in the room. So this is ideal. Our news team spoke with Minister Joseph this afternoon. He says the concrete roof also aids in sealing the building. However, there is a patching work to be done. The work includes gutting the building as the design is not ideal for a laboratory. So um, the walls are being knocked out. Dr. Christian will be arriving here tomorrow with his full plan so that um, he can see how he wants his, uh, the building laid out. And he's been advised by uh, PAHO as well. Well, the health minister says there is a two-week window for completion of the lab, but it should be ready for the Pan American Health Organization visit next week. Well, uh, the former Margeson ward is the isolation ward, and the other end is the quarantine center there. There are no confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Antigua and Barbuda at this point. New regulations for drones and drone operators comes into effect in April. The Ministry of Public Utilities, Civil Aviation and Energy is putting the public on notice. It, in its bid to be proactive in mitigating potential disruption to the economy and the provision of essential services, Permanent Secretary within the Ministry, Ed Edson Joseph, made the announcement on ABS's Antigua and Barbuda today. We want to be proactive as a state and to ensure that persons who are operating drones are regulated. Joseph says regulation will apply to drones with capacities to fly higher than 100 feet. Operators of these drones will also be regulated and need to apply for a license. He says the fees are not prohibitive and will be $60 EC per year or $100 EC for two years for drones and $120, $120 EC per year or $200 EC for two years for operators. Operators will also need to wear a high visibility vest with the registration numbers displayed while operating their drones. Advisor to the Minister Brian Challenger says the kinks have been worked out and the system will soon be ready to go. He describes part of the registration process and requirements. There are certain forms which they will have to fill out, um, certain criteria which they will have to meet, um, police certificate of good character, things like that. We don't want any and everybody um, operating these drones as you can appreciate. The new regulations are supported by the Civil Aviation Act and responsibility for their administration will fall under the remit of the Air Transport Licensing Board. Penalties for operating without the licenses range from $5,000, $5,001 million EC. $5,100 EC, that is. Now, the Youth Land Education Empowerment Program, YEEP, has already registered over 400 students for their upcoming semester. However, YEEP Program Manager, Troy Allen, says the school is in desperate need of a temporary facility for its current students. Allen tells ABS, well, facilitating classes in different locations has proved taxing for students who are preparing to take their CSEC and CAPE examinations in a matter of months. Now, among the issues, he says, is classes starting late due to, uh, to late to accommodate travel between classes and a lack of water and malfunctioning air conditioning. The government made a commitment last year to provide the school with a physical facility in time for its September semester. However, Allen is hopeful something can be put in place before orientation for new students in May. About 300 students are expected to graduate from, uh, from the free second chance program this year. Allen says 40 to 50 members of the Antigua and Barbuda Defense Force will join the program for the upcoming semester. And celebrating education, 2020 vision, is the theme for this year's Education Month. To mark the start of Education Month, hundreds of students and teachers gathered at Spring Gardens Moravian Church for a service of Thanksgiving on Monday. Education Minister Honorable Michael Brown delivered the keynote address at the service. Here's more from the service. Last but not least, education requires us to be in the constant exercise of using data to examine where were we yesterday? Where were we 
last week. And with the new generation of students that we have now, where do we need to be tomorrow? And with that realization, we have a full understanding of not all the strategies that were utilized and were successful in the past can be utilized and applied to today. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Tegan Barbuda is mourning the loss of a great steel pan historian. Eustace Archibald Cornwall Manning Henry Esquire succumbed to a long-term illness Monday evening at the Mount St. John's Medical Center. ABS's Kim Emanuel Beer tells us more about his life and contribution to steel pan music and the Trinidad State. Known as the master pan builder who devoted his life to the art form, Manning was 90 years old when he died. He was a pioneer, tuna player, and former captain who is responsible for the longevity of the oldest steel pan in the world, the Hell's Gate Steel Orchestra. He will be remembered for his contribution in keeping steel pan music alive here in the Twin Island State as a cultural hero. In 2015, he was recommended to be a Grand Cross of the most precious order, princely heritage, GCH. There's no denying Henry's significant involvement in this art form. He also proved to be a master at not just building steel pans, but playing them as well. He spent a lot of his time teaching the art form to many who today are some of the best players. Acting Director of Culture, Ken Cordes says, even though he was never taught by Manning, he still has great influence on his life. Hearing all of those stories, you know, it gave me a deeper appreciation for all of the work that they put in, um, put into making the art form the way it is today. And it was one of the reasons why I decided to um, continue to pursue um, the art form uh, and music. Cordes says Manning's contribution to the art form is more than deserving of an award. After his fight to get the music accepted, which was not an easy task and still not talked about enough today. In the early years of the steel pan movement, um, and you know how they had to hide and hide in gutters to um, evade the police, um, fearing that you know people used to stone them and you know consider them um, outcasts because of the, the because they were playing this instrument. Now his son Vernon Henry has taken over from his father as builder and tuner of the Hell's Gate Steel Orchestra. Kim Emanuel Baird, ABS News. What do you do every morning between 6 and 9 a.m.? We're waiting for you to join us here on Antigua Barbuda today. Tomorrow, we've got a full day. Our very first interview will be with the Minister with Responsibility for Health, Wellness and the Environment, the Honorable Malvin Joseph. We're talking COVID-19 as well as a host of other issues within his ministry. We're also going to be continuing our look at the National Schools Theatre Festival. Melissa McLeish of Sonoval Riches Academy will be in the house. In addition, Dr. Linroy Christian joins us again, and we will also have Devley Gardner from the Slavery Memorial that was just erected in the Nelson's Dockyard area. That and so much more tomorrow on Antigua Barbuda Today. And we've come to the end of the national segment of tonight's news. However, Terry's here with us to tell us all about sports. Yeah, just before we get into sports, Liverpool lost again today in the FA Cup. I'll just let you know, that's not our top story. But <laughs> worry, Grandmaster <laughs> Trevor Simon captures another global worry title. I'll tell you all about that story and a whole lot more when we come back. Stay with us.